Willkommen, guten Morgen in der Chaos. Good morning and welcome to the Chaos Zone TV on day three. Mit, gegen oder jenseits. Welcome to the talk with, against or beyond politics, a reflection on the paradoxical concept of politics used in anarchism by Jonathan Eibisch. This talk is being translated into English for you by B and Katzenzunge. Please use the hashtag RC3 Chaos Zone for feedback about the talk. And any feedback about the translation is appreciated as well. Please use the hashtag C3Lingo. Hope you enjoy the talk. Hello, schön, dass ihr da seid. Hello, nice to see you here. With, against, or beyond politics, a reflection on a paradoxical concept of politics and used in anarchism. Okay, I hope you find something interesting and have fun. Thanks to Chaos Zone in Halle, who made this possible, that we can show this movie or small film. My name is Jonathan and I'm your guide. And everything else can be found on my blog Paradox-A. So what will we be talking about? It's about an irritating moment I had, and I think other people as well. So there was a something happened at the same time. Uh, so there is critics of politics, and simultaneously, on the other hand, there is more politics and more practice of radical politics. I observed this and then I thought, well, this is irritating. How can it be that more and more people are being political in anarchism? And on the other hand, they are, they don't like politics at all. I think it's maybe like in this picture, politics is good, anarchy is yeah, so politics is bad, anarchy is good. Yeah, so you go somewhere and there's not enough space on the wall, so the message has to be short. And then people might come by, so you have are in a hurry. But is it that simple? Politics is bad, anarchy is good? Maybe. But on the other hand, it shows, well, in anarchy, there is critics of what politics are. So this is the beginning or a stepping stone for what I want to talk about. So what is politics? What is anarchy? What do anarchists think of when they talk about politics? And with this irritation about this internal logic, I want to start. So what is there today where we see it's not that simple to do politics if you are anarchistic? anarchistically inclined. So I want to start with a few quotes about the, um, about the discomfort with politics, and then the actual work, I hope you can like it, and of course the question, what is politics in anarchy or in anarchism? And of course there are several opinions, I'll just provide one, and you can see if you can work with that. And then we can discuss it, of course, and the question, maybe if politics isn't as nice, isn't that nice as we sometimes think, are there alternatives? What is something like anti-politics? And that's a, just a word for now. It's something that politics isn't. But what is it? What parts of politics are part of anarchistical thinking? And that's what we will look at later. Okay, I hope you can follow. Let's begin. And that's how we begin with the irritation about political logic. I already told you that in anarchy it's about critique and critiquing parties and political institutions. But of course there's more. It's about the political logic that we find in grassroots movements and also social movements. And that's where it gets interesting. 
as said, I am working with anarchistical theory, so I work with texts and thoughts, but it wouldn't be as interesting and not as relevant if it wasn't about really concrete things that also affect and irritate me personally. So I brought eight examples for you where the, such an irritation about the political logic in a social movement develops on its own. And I think that's typical examples as well. So you can see, okay, it is relevant for people who are in emancipatory social movements. Eight examples. The first one. It's a demonstration, a classical one, in Chemnitz, where they were protesting a, a jail, a women's jail. And they both uh, connected a feminist message with the traditional one against prisons. And on the protest we found both. So this utopia um, of a society without prisons. To, that it's possible that we live in a society that doesn't need prisons, and that's an ethical um, demand as well. Because you can say, if you imprison people, it doesn't better them. And then also is connected to the question, what does cause criminal activity in the first place? And so imprisoning people might not be the solution. That's an ethical, critical statement. Both is beyond political logic, which is also included nevertheless. nevertheless. So they are also demanding minimal wage behind bars. So people who work there must earn their living and also a right to protest, so they can organize behind bars as well. Of course, in prisons, they don't like that. The prison wards don't like that. But it's a very basic uh, demand. And that causes an irritation. So you want to improve the situation in prisons. And the second example is quite similar. It's about a protest in Annenberg, the pro-choice protest. It's against a so-called March for Life, uh, or March for Life, that exists in Berlin and Stuttgart as well. So there are radical feminist protests against pro-life people. And we see it in uh, chants like No God, No, no State, and also against the patriarchal, patriarchal logic. So it's not about accepting a patriarchal state. And also in Latin America, this connection is very strong at the moment. So politics in this sense also has a taste of being patriarchal. And that's enough for it being uh, criticized. On a fundamental level. But on the other side, the uh, feminist demand is usually to make abortions legal, which, by the way, it was illegal for 150 years, which is a quite a big scandal because um, it's a quite a limit on self-determination. So that's a very political demand. And this as well is in conflict with a very fundamental uh, critique of a the state in total. But there's more. A very classical example as well, I would say, is about the uh, action of civil disobedience. For example, with the movement Ende Gelände where people really call to protest. So people block train tracks because coal is being moved there. And they are blocking the tracks to make it obvious, we don't want that, we want to stop that, we want to stop this brown coal infrastructure. To also cause uh, damages to the companies. But is it that obvious? 
Just imagine the blockage is there, there is one to two hundred people, and then the police comes, uh, as it usually does, towards the evening, and the people on the tracks then think, well, maybe we should leave, or shouldn't we? Because maybe the press was already there. It seemed very successful day, and some would say, yeah, we we did our part, we made a good blockage, we can leave now. This is what we wanted, we have a good media echo, we made our statement. But others would say, well, that's not enough, I'm not here to, for the media, I want to do something. I want to stop this power plant, I want to block it to cause as much damage to the company as possible and to directly do something and the media doesn't do anything for me. And it's not about the la last one being more radical or more anarch anarchistic, but these things happen. And here is two logical uh, trains of thought that are in conflict. So the direct interaction and the other one that's just uh, wanting to do a statement. How they decide in the moment, that always depends on the people, I'm not judging, that that's just the way it is, that's just something I wanted to show. And these two logical threads are quite, in, uh, quite intertwined. And then I also saw it in an action camp, where there was a debate around what the political what is political? So there were people who really worked on the infrastructure of the camp, cooking, setting up tents, tidying up, also organizing the tent itself or the camp itself. And they saw that as their job and just set something up. And then there were action focused people, very communistically oriented, and they just came there for one or two days for the big action day and they did their action and then there was a fight. So the alternative people who set up the infrastructure were angry that the others were not contributing anything, they were just using it. Yeah, but you hippies, you're just building a camp, but that's not what it's about. So we can see that there is a little we can see a fight. What is the political? Is it already building, uh, setting up an alternative camp or just doing the big announced action or campaign? A fifth example would be the so-called Gretchenfrage of using violence. So the, the question of your core beliefs. So, of course, there are sometimes escalations, but afterwards there is a debate, usually, what does it good for? And in this case, it's not about, is the violence, um, can it be allowed, can it be justified? But how do people interpret what's happening there? For example, anarchists are argumenting, are arguing, I don't have to share it, I don't have to like that there was violence, but we don't want to accept that political logic, what was allowed, what is justified. We are saying that people can decide themselves, so we are not judging what is good and what isn't. We don't want to accept this argument at all. So this is just uh, an act of self-expression by the people. And it doesn't matter if we like it or not. But politically, strate uh, strategically, this would be wrong. So you shouldn't accept by being provoked into uh, setting something on fire because that doesn't help your cause and it discredits your cause. And so strategically, following the political logic, this would be wrong. But of course, we see politics and something else, this self-determined acting that is in contrast to politics, or is being set in contrast to politics. I have uh, more examples. One is very typical, I think, especially in self-organized leftist groups. There is the 
it's a fight between um, squad politics and personal uh, improvement. So there was this movement that grew and did a few protests. It was quite successful and it grew more people. But then there was this fight that started. And now the question, what's next? And a few people, one of the, more of those guys, guys, they said, we should do this and we should do uh, write another pamphlet. And so they said, we have to do this and this and they try to determine what should be done politically because that's what worked. But others said, well, this is squad politics. You are just d saying what has to be done because that is apparently the right thing politically, but we want to develop ourselves. We want to find out how are we involved in politics and how are we changing our relationships and how are we intertwined with command and control and authority and that's a conflict and I don't want to say what is right or wrong because I can see both sides but also this fight seems to be very uh, typical so there are two worlds colliding in this in this fight and of course the the old problem of choice or of elections. So in anarchistic, in anarchistically inspired circles, it's not that certain that elections are just uh, uh, are just declined or uh, disliked. But some say, well, sometimes it makes sense. But also, they just don't want to take active part in elections. So especially in such unions, they don't think it's their job to tell people to go to vote and or to vote for something specific. They leave it up to their members to make up their minds where they are positioned. And they also say this political terrain is not theirs, but they are they want to lead on the economical field. And that's what's important to them. So this is the contrast uh, here. Politics is contrasted to politics, uh, to, to economicals. And of course, finally, and nice that you listen for so long, if satire becomes real, so satire parties that actually enter parliament, for example, the party in Germany, they have a lot of fun. And they also paradise uh, or satirize politics. And you could say they have a lot of anti-politics because they take it, but then they use satire to morph it. But what people, if people are elected into parliaments, can they continue this? Can they stay or remain anti-politics or do they just become part of the system? And this happened here in Leipzig where two people from the party were elected to the city parliament and they had exactly that question. Do we do politics or don't we? And what do we see as politics? So if satire becomes real or serious, this also shows the friction in the political logic. So I have this scheme prepared. I showed it before. So if we say this is politics, then there also has to be the other in the theory something that is created that we exclude. So Newman, who developed this, said that anti-politics is in utopia and in... Uh, sorry, I missed the second one. And that's something that's very strong in anarchy. So on the political side, I could say the strategic and the programmatic, that's the political things that are always questioned in anarchy. So after the theory of Newman, there is a, is a paradoxon that the um, autonomous politics. So this is also where the problem comes from, I think. But I go further than this. 
uh, scheme. So anti-politics would be utopia and ethics. And I'm saying there is a wing within emancipatory uh, movement. So it's not just some people and a thought, but I have very concrete things in mind. And also, I'm not like other post-anarchists that I say, I don't accept another society. I think another society is possible, so I would call it libertarian socialism. But of course, anarchists doubt that as well. But we have to start by saying, yes, we want another society with another quality. And I would say, uh, say that in difference to Newman. And what I showed you now is something that's not just abstract. It all, it's also based on experience, practical experience, and connected to emancipatory, emancipatory movements. And it's not just an academical ivory tower concept. It's for the people. And hopefully more than just some anarchistical theories out there. Okay, now let's move on. So what is the uncomfortableness of politics in radical socialism? What is the uneasiness? This is what this part is about now. So the point is here that anarchism arises when the question came up if socialism should politicize itself as a grassroots movement, it should become a political movement. So towards the end of the 19th century, this question came up in the socialist movement. Should we take part in politics? Should we found parties? Should we try to have an impact on the state? And some would vote against this, against um, the state as a form of uh, centralization of authoritarian rule. And this politicization of social movements was uh, denied. Instead, they want to stay in their traditional forms of organization, federalism, autonomy, and different base groups which are connected. So the International Labour Association then excluded the anti-authoritarian. In 1872, they started their own organization, an anti-authoritarian international movement, the so-called Pact of saint gimier which has an anniversary next year. And there's a declaration in this pact. We declare that the destruction of every political power is the first duty of the proletariat. Second, every organization of a so-called provis provisional and revolutionary political power to bring about this destruction is just one um, flaw more and can be just as dangerous for the proletariat as all existing governments. And third, that the refusal of compromises for the social revolution of all countries has to be brought about beyond all bourgeois politics. So this is a foundation document of the socialist movement. And it says we deny the political logic and power, so not only the state, but everything that is beyond that. So it clearly says that the political power needs to be destroyed here. I mean, you can't really say that these are the really original true anarchists. They had a certain concept, and we can't really transfer that to the current situation. But it's interesting that there's this clear denial as part of this foundational document, and this experience is being repeated. So the second international, which was founded afterwards, anarchists were excluded. And they started anarcho-syndicalist uh, labor unions in many countries uh, following the exclusion of their own country. And again, when there was a red labor union international in Moscow, when the whole thing was um, transferred to the Russian state, the SSSR. 
1922, where it happened again that the anarchists said they don't want to take part in this political logic. So, so anarchism then starts when this political principle is being actively refused. So these are some of the historical experiences. Another problem that anarchists have with politics is the uh, um, embodiment in the state of politics. So politics uh, gain certain autonomy in modern times. Is it so these are the questions that are coming up again today in social movements. Of course, there's politics outside of the state when we gather demonstrations, occupations in groups, whatever. Politic happens outside of the state structures. But the problem is that politics has assigned to the state and is taken over by the state. And we can see this in many movements. So for instance, um, the CSD, Christopher Street Day, which um, is being taken over by a neoliberal establishment in recent years more and more. So there are different approaches, different opinions, of course. But this shows very clearly uh, and why anarchists have a problem. This not the topic itself, but the changes to the form of such a movement. So the whole topic of queer and LGBTI and anarchism is directed against the principle of the state, the principle of the authoritarian centralized hierarchical principle, which wants to take over everything and submise everything. The contrast to this are concepts of self-government, communes, relationships, networks. So a group might say that we do reject the state structures, but we meet every Tuesday in our group, which shows, again, this field of tension. Um, apparently, the politics of the state are very different from the politics in this group. So there seems to be a, quite a contrast. And this leads to the question, what kind of politics is embodied in the politics of this group outside of the state? And this, again, shows the problem of assigning the concept of politics to the state or other structures. So there's a question on um, what kind of discussions to have. There's not one single correct way, but anarchists stand up to create their own thing, and this is quite central to the concept. So the third uh, element is so-called um, Politikverdrossenheit, um, so being fed up with politics. So for instance, there might be elections, and many people didn't go to vote. And a journalist might ask, or a political scientist, what's going on? Is this still a democracy? Um, well, people are fed up with politics. Oh yes, people say, yeah, okay, but what's going on here? People don't feel like they're being understood and you need to explain it more to them, make it more approachable and eventually they will understand. But the point is that not anarchism creates this and disenchantment with politics, but these are parties which try to establish politics as an autonomous sphere, which is not fully assigned to the state, not fully assigned to the society. There's also a technocracy, which very much undermines the political structures. So the principle that Capitalism undermines democratic structures and is also being fought by fascist um, movements. So this is about an erosion, an opening of politics, like a sponge in liberal democracy. And these 
contradictions come about in liberal democracy and just lead to this uh, frustration, which is uh, termed as uh, disenchantment with politics. So this is not brought about by anarchists, but they connect it, they highlight these contradictions which uh, come up in the political structures that we have today. And the last point, uh, which is an argument by anarchists, why it makes sense to be critical and to be um, wary of politics. There are so many other things that we can do instead of politics. So, for instance, when you think about you know, there are self-organized alternative leftist examples. For example, direct support of refugees might not be a political act because you support these people directly. They had to leave the countries, they need to help. Or for instance, autonomous centers where people try to create something that is self-directed. Then we have culture and subculture, think about punk rock or hardcore scene, things like that, where a lot of change has been brought about on this cultural track. Of course, this has been um, taken over again by capitalism, but changes have happened. And this means that people who had radical views, they wanted to do something differently and create a counter model. And of course, there are different forms of self-organization. So if people in the neighborhood help each other, is this a form of politics or is this necessarily politics? And when does it start to become politics? Maybe it's also something different. So anarchists are wary of politics and often politics appears to be boring suspect it takes a lot of time and also um, prevents initiative it is quite bureaucratic and hierarchical it's not authentic it seems to be running over the individual it doesn't really want to respect the individual that much. So, I mean, the other question is if it's as simple, if you can just turn around and say, well, uh, screw politics then. But there's a difference between apolitical or unpolitical, anarchism, anti political, by questioning the political structures. And despite all the wariness, there's reference to politics, and politics are also being practiced. We'll hear more about that in a moment. Okay, it's too much. Okay. Now we come to the slower and a bit more boring part of my work. So and that's a lot of work with source texts of anarchy or anarchism and there's a lot of anti-political messages i'll read a bit of it so you know what i'm talking about for example what is called politics that is comparably on the surface and unhuman so I, I, that i never noticed that it even affects me or as far as politics is based on an ideological construct, it can't just stop with it or surpass it. Logic and na naivety are at the fundament of politics and that's where its trap lies. Or we are not allowed or we cannot have shepherds if, if you don't want to be sheep. You can't have government if you don't want slave. Away with governments and those ambitions, away with those uh, scam artists and the th they um, play with the words freedom br uh, brotherhood just to be uh, lost again or then there was about the socialistic state of the people socialistic debates were not 
uh, are not getting better until anarchistic thoughts entered the debate. Then you, uh, then it showed that we were not, we don't have to do something clever and opportunistic and for the future, but we have to stop politics at all. It's impossible to distinguish the fight of the unions and the acceptance on and the participation of the sad business of politics except then to mix up the two. And then lastly, Emma Goldman, and it's about women's suffrage as well. I don't think that women will make politics worse, but also I don't think they can improve it. So why insist on such a law if the woman cannot improve on what men did, on the mistakes of men? The history of this shows that Nothing was achieved that couldn't have been achieved easier and better and more long term. So you see immediately those quotes, they showed that there are these poetical messages. Of course, it's historical. We can't put it, compare it to today one to one because meanings of words change. But of course, it's interesting to talk about a big word like politics because it's not just about the word but also about the image that it conjures with us and what's behind it. And to bring a text that's older than 100 years into today isn't that simple. But it's interesting, it's fascinating. So they are really um, ignoring politics. They are not saying let's improve politics, more democracy or make it more direct. But they say no, no politics. So a, a complete denial and refusal also about the logics of politics. And it's very interesting to work with this and it shows that there is an element of anarchy and anarchism that it worries about politics and doesn't like it. There is, as I showed, a few anarchistical problems with doing politics. And that leads to the question, what the fuck is politics? Like with many of those big words, freedom, freedom, uh, freedom, security, all of those, it's connected to a lot of feelings. It's a container word and we can put in a lot of content into it. And that's also the problem because we always act as if it was totally clear, but it isn't. So what I'm doing here working with the word is very interesting indeed because it's about working with the words and filling it with your own content and finding how we can act in the society that we live in and also change it. To fight about words is partially worth it because people use different words but we can use them to communicate and then it's interesting what lies behind it. So, for example, there's people who say that what the state does is not politics. It's just administration. The political is what we do when we connect on the street, when we solve our own problems. So that's a re very radical, direct um, association. But what I'm talking about here is I'm it's not about doing real or finally again politics, but to reach other conclusions. So it's a definite politics definition. It's not more correct than others. It's just one that takes on the debate from a certain direction. And I would say politics is the, um, is the negotiation of interests and those participating in the um, in the negotiation have a very different in their power resources and the decisions that are met, uh, made politically that can include consensus, but they are not based on um, equal footing. So there are hierarchies and there is force involved. 
and also people it affects people who are not taking part in the negotiations so we could say politics is for setting up a frame and to keep up a frame for acting within a society so a classical society like patriarchy and also a state logic is kept up by this and politics does compromises also with less privileged people but if we want something entirely different like an egalitarian society then we also have to think about what does politics involve but this question what is a form how people can organize so how can they solve their issues and then there is the principle of decentralized autonomous communities and a federal system between them so people would still solve their problems but in a different way than today but how does this turn into a government and we have to get more data on this but interesting at this point is that this question is just started by critiquing what classical politics involves so politics is um, is uh, collected or engrossed by the state and we have to undo that and that means to change the how our society behaves on a very fundamental level but the state cannot just exist as a, the institutions of the state but also as the principle so the anarchists also want that this principle is translated into other areas of the society and it's in direct contrast with self-determination and self-organization so i am using a very certain meaning of the word politics it could be called governmental so related to a government it's uh, it's in question it's being questioned if politics creates a good order it's conflict oriented so there are fights it's historicizing so it doesn't always mean the same but it's an expression of a certain society and it's ultra realistic that's what i called it so it assumes that there are fights about power that we have to accept this that's a part of politics but since the realism that's in there it's taken serious but and it's also taken more serious than it maybe is so it's ultra realistic there are other word, uh, meanings of the word of course but this meaning this definition is to create a certain view on politics so there is this uh, denial and refusal of politics and i say there is this search for something else in a, a society that is organized differently that, that is complex how do we get out so what are anti-political fixed points and i also organized it into the scheme so there is this state politic in the middle and there are other spheres of society other options of how we could act so for example there is the utopia, utopia ethics and i said something about that earlier but there's also the sphere of the individual the social society economy and society so these are all attempts to go away from the politics and to self-determined and how the individual can assign itself to the political sphere for instance there are spheres like neighborhoods which are different from administrative politics and if we look at um, society as contrast to the state uh, to put it shortly i mean the anarchism thinks there's a level of society which goes beyond the state um, and it 
also looking at economics, it says that this also structures uh, domination and power. For instance, um, there are economical struggles. And society consists of lots of communal projects, alternative projects, which try to realize uh, different forms of living together. So we can say that the anarchist movement uh, tries to escape from this political sphere. But why does politics come back into it then again? Why is that the case? Uh, this is mostly about trying to prevent the different practices uh, to become a means of their own. So for instance, um, self-determination and individualism can become a problem if people are only taking care of themselves or for instance in the social sphere so for instance um, certain projects could just become a compensation for poverty at large or, or be limited to certain people also uh, society in itself is not free of politics we can't just keep it out also in the economic sphere, there are approaches which say they don't want to have to do anything with politics, but this leads to a vacuum. So for instance, proletarians in an autonomous labor union, there are contradictions and different opinions that need to be negotiated. And finally, simply focusing on labor politics, this can also lead that political parties are trying to take this over and dominate it because they don't want to deal with that in the first place. Also in society, there are maybe many communal projects which started out trying to create something different, but um, become some kind of alternative uh, to live nicely, but without having this uh, ambition to create something larger than that. And same in the area of culture, which might remain culture only or for itself and does not question um, society at large. And the point is to bring in politics and question politics. So it com politics comes back in the deck by the back door. And this leads to this. Um, irritating simultaneousness of criticizing politics uh, at the same time refusing politics um, the way it is. So this is not about creating a different politics. Politics does remain a politics, but in anarchism the answer can be that sometimes we have to take part in this game if for certain reasons this might make sense. But for other reasons, we will approach this in a very different manner. All this uh, theoretical explanation, which I've just uh, presented here, should explain that it actually does make sense to have this paradox. Because when you look at it more closely, it turns out that this paradoxical situation is not a limit in anarchism itself, but it is in fact to find an answer to the paradoxical society that we live in. So we need to accept that politics is a form of condition of power, but sometimes you also have to take part in politics, but in a different way. So the idea in anarchist politics is to move in these paradoxical situations, but not just reproduce them, but rather to try and transform these conditions under which uh, politics is being practiced. This does make sense, and I think it explains the narrative which I presented at the start, and it helps understand it better. We understand better why there are these um, simultaneousnesses, um, these contradictions, and an emancipatory social movements who are always presented with this kind of questions. Who do we refer to? How do we deal with this political question and how we can 
uh, bring it about. So in anarchism, we try to strive for autonomy, which means um, escaping the conditions of power and the political logic and to realize something different, which can take its place. So this striving for autonomy is always a process and will never be finished. So in anarchism, there are different strategies which are connecting to these different anti-political points of reference that I mentioned before. So for instance, individualism, communism, communitarianism, mutualism, syndicalism or the communitarian syndicalism. These are different attempts to strive for autonomy, which sometimes also get mixed up. And this seems to be the common denominator in this pluralistic um, approaches of anarchism. So self-determination and autonomy are connected with the different movements, which you can see here in this uh, schema. And I think this says a lot about the schema, the nature of anarchy. Yeah, now we're here. Nice that you followed me so far. For the end, I just want to summarize it thesis-like, what I was working on, because a lot of things I was speaking about are part of my dissertation. So what were we talking about? First, the critics of and um, uh, ignoring of politics is a very important starting point for anarchy, or uh, refusal, not ignoring. Second, politics is always connected to the state, either from the beginning or it be becomes engrossed by it. There are, people might see this differently, but there is uh, people are just illusioned often. Third, after the political sphere, there are other uh, social spheres where emancipatory acting occurs and alternatives can be created. In anarchy, there is the individual, the social, the society, economy, and the community as anti-point to politics and as a connection point for anti-politics. Fourth, paradoxically, in anarchism, there's also uh, politics occurs. So it just comes in through a back door. It serves for um, bringing the alternative practices that were developed into the so uh, <laughs> libertarian social society. It has the function to um, it has to, uh, the goal to that alternative practices can be given up instead of becoming politics des themselves. With a principal critique of politics is important to be able to develop radical positions at all. So to prove or improve on the basis of what I said, it doesn't mean that what I said, what I told you is just the truth. But what I tried is to provide a certain perspective on the whole thing. And I hope that I could do that and that you could follow me. Basically, you have your own thoughts. How do you act in society? What do you want to do? Maybe you start thinking, well, what is politics for me? Make a mind map, uh, write down some associations, and then write down, well, where did my images come from? Is that really my thought? Is that my imagination? And how does it work with politics of state or of parties or also of political groups? So what is something that's really different? And I would say, yes, let's say politics is still a problem, but it's also as necessary as cleaning up the dishes. Nobody likes doing it, but it has to be done. And just 
uh, letting other people do it is not a solution, but we have to remain critical. And that's what anarchy is all about, to create something different. But we will discover a lot of things with this anti-politics. If we think about, are there other options? Yeah, we will find other practices. And there's also a way of explaining how anarchy works. An interesting uh, social um, yeah, thing. And I wanted to just show a small window into my work. You can also contact me. I have a blog. It's called paradox-a.de. You can also talk to me if you want me to have a talk or something. But if you have too much money, you can also contact me and give me money. Because my dissertation, I want to publish it and I still need money for that. I can't do it directly. Please write an email to me. And if you want to support that, feel free to do so. I would be happy. But also thanks to Chaos Zone Halle so uh, that we could turn this into a reality. And also my cameraman and helper. And yeah, see you soon. To make your own thoughts. And thank you also for your attention from the translation booth. You heard the talk with Against or Beyond Politics, a reflection on the paradoxical concept of politics used by anarchism or in anarchism by Jonathan Abish. Thanks for this nice talk. Back to the studio. We have a few questions to, for the speaker. So start with the first one. To the first point with the prisons, there is a protest against it, but is there also ideas how to still exclude people from society? So, about the prisons, there are pro people protesting prisons, but are there other solutions of how to exclude people from society otherwise? That's a very good question. Um, so, I just picked it up as an example to uh, demonstrate uh, paradoxical nature of the term of politics. I mean, I'm not an expert, but there are different approaches. So if you think about Sweden and Norway, there are different progressive approaches. For instance, there are prison islands where people are not locked up all the time, but they try to live there in a self-administered uh, manner. But this is just... Um, some trivial cases such as driving without a ticket on public transport. Why do people go to prison for that? I mean, but regarding um, forms of violence and crime which won't disappear, uh, this might be a model how to deal with that. But I have to admit there are many other possibilities, I think, and the question needs to be asked, what are the origins of crime and violence? And my idea would be to have a certain kind of uh, ban. And this is also a question among anarchists, of course. Where do you see the difference is... between anarchism and liberalism? Yeah, I mean, there are different approaches, of course. So in different political camps, uh, liberalism uh, stands on a different grounds than anarchism. When you look at this from a political theoretical perspective, the question is um, how to define state, and not only the institution as such. So the institution of the state is a hierarchical authoritarian patriarchal system, but you need a central instance of control which regulates society but on the other hand um, when you look at the history of ideas there are influences from liberalism or socialism affecting anarchism and i can't really draw a clear line there so the focus on the individual and in anarchism which is always thought as uh, being connected to other people, whereas in liberalism, uh, there's a stronger focus on individuals as being separate from others. So in economic, uh, from economic perspective, uh, competition is seen as a good thing in liberalism, but in anarchism, uh, not so much. And the cooperation is being constructed as, as superior. Okay, another thing. 
don't you see the danger to with uh, demands to the state to legitimize it? Wouldn't demands have to be um, done to people? That's a very good question, of course, which we can discuss more. Um, I would like to step back and I look at this that in a radical or leftist organization demands are often being brought forward but it's it's not clear who are the people that are demanding and if institutions don't act themselves who is acting it's all very unclear the idea is to take it up yourselves and to approach people directly which is probably what the question was aiming at. So to appeal directly to people to bring those changes about. And it's also about helping those people uh, provide them with support. And you need very um, transparent uh, models. So this is always, um, yeah, difference between um, suggesting something directly without demanding it. Also a controversial question. Why are attentates against non-state entities not fancy anymore? Are people too lazy now? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, so if I talk about anarchism, I have to answer questions like this, but I think the talk was about something else. So I don't need to justify anything, but I can answer the question nevertheless. So of course this has something to do that historically there was a phase when um, anarchists or people that were termed anarchists were um, doing terrorist act against heads of state at the start of the 20th century. Uh, what we see today as the surveillance state um, has been created as a response to that partly. So the surveillance today that we see, which is quite advanced. Um, so I mean, we can of course talk about if this makes sense, those terrorist acts. Um, but the question is if it makes sense to attack individuals because this is not really the nature of the forms of uh, domination that we see today. I mean, there are of course ethical reasons. So I wouldn't blame individuals, but you also need to ask maybe more than in other movements, the question of responsibility. So which are the privileged classes that uh, profit from the um, the current state of affairs? Um, but this is, of course, not necessarily linked to uh, terrorist acts. And maybe, please, a short answer. What concrete act hints for acting are you saying inactive but interested people so what should they do if they want to get involved politically so what what should you do if you are not engaged currently yeah um so as always i mean this is my approach and i hope it, this came across there are many different possibilities there are the emancipatory social movements, for instance, feminism, uh, climate justice, and other forms of social struggles. So these movements exist in many different places. I mean, that's all what we have. I mean, think these are the right people with the right ideas. I don't view this in a negative way. Me personally, um, I like to bank on the power of emancipatory movements to create a different society bottom up. A lot of things are happening there. So have a look what you find interesting, which topics you find appealing, get together and groups, try to bring together the different topics. And of course, anarchists are suggesting that such a 
social movement needs to be autonomous from uh, institutions of the state, such as political parties. So these are the possibilities of self-organized movements and especially here in German-speaking area, we can really look to other countries and learn from them. Personally, I would um, bank on this. So we should uh, come away from the thought that we should be oriented towards the state and laws and those institutions, but in contrast, we can create alternatives ourselves with many people together. Okay, thank you very much. Could you repeat the address of your blog? Sure, the URL is paradox-a.de. Uh, you can have a look at it and contact me. Thanks a lot for having me. Otherwise, please use the rocket chat or the hashtag rc 3 chaoszone And I think we can talk a lot there. Last word? Erzählung bei dem bei der Stage about Future um 18 Uhr. Also wenn es euch interessiert hat, schaut da einfach gerne noch mal rein. Und yeah, tonight there will be another talk by me, a talk about future, more of telling. Yeah. Thank you, and we give over to Potsdam.